Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better act. Hat on, suit on, suit on, looking like a trap dog, giving them a like a million bucks, but things in his cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be but Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Everybody out there listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands Everybody, you are listening to the voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey <laughs> got a radio show. Man, oh man, oh man. You know what, y'all? I mean, really, the goodness of God is overwhelming if you think about it. I mean, really, really think about it. Even when your circumstance doesn't look so bright, even when you're going through something that's causing you discomfort pain, even in that, God's goodness is actually overwhelming. Because don't forget why you're going through this moment. First of all, this too shall pass. But also, secondly, remember, man, ain't everything else that you've gone through that seemed so insurmountable at the time, didn't you get past that too? I mean, it's amazing if you really think about it. You don't get stuck on any one issue your whole life. The only people that get stuck on an issue their whole life is people who won't let it go. That's really all it is. There are people who exist, and you may be one of them. Oh, please know I've been guilty of it myself before. But I learned something. There are things in my past that I just would not let go of. It, It was done. It was over with. I was past it. But I, I would not let go of it. It was over. The the dude that did it to me didn't exist no more. The problem that it created didn't exist no more. The only problem that kept hanging on was I would not let it go. And man, you can't go forward if you're going to keep looking in the past. It's an impossible thing. It's like driving a car. If you keep looking only in the rearview mirror while you're driving, you're going to crash pretty soon. And a lot of people just keep crashing over and over and over and over because you won't drive your car. You keep looking in the rearview mirror at your past. Oh, woe is me. Oh, you know, they did me like that. You know, I ain't been the same since he cheated on me. Oh, man, ever since she stole my money, I ain't been the same. Man, she played me, and ever since that, I done treated women differently. You may have some deeper stuff going on, like, but eventually, guess what? Do you understand that when you have a relationship God with God, you can take that to him, too, and drop it off and leave it there? Do you know that he can fix and heal that? Maybe it's something serious like that that you need fixing or healing from. A relationship with God can fix and heal that. But man, 
Come on, y'all. Whatever it is. And I'm not trying to downplay it or make it act like it wasn't traumatic in your life because, oh, God, you don't want to, you know, you don't want nobody to do that to you because you want to be the, the, you know, the um, poster child for misery. So please don't let me take that from you. If that's your position, that's your Hall of Fame card you hanging on to. I'm the poster child for misery. Oh, no one is more woe than me. Then oh, please don't let Steve try to take that from you. You go ahead and hang on to that. But let me tell you something, though. If that's what you're going to hang on to, that's what you're going to always be, the poster child for misery. At one point in time, you're going to have to get on and move past it. You Sometimes, man, it's merely a simple thing of taking it to God and leaving it there. You know, some people don't have money for therapy. Some people don't even know who to call for therapy. God is the best psychologist in the world. He can fix it for you. There is nothing too hard for God. You know, when something seems impossible, y'all, God does the impossible all the time, every day. You want to know how I know? I just look at a couple basic things. Do you know that that sun comes up every day in the morning? It comes up in the east and it sets in the west. You can't do nothing about that. Oh, you can you can wish because you planted your flowers on a certain side of your house. You can wish all you want that maybe one day he would bring it up out the northwest so those flowers would bloom. No, no, it's going to come up out the east. And once the sun hits the horizon, when you look in the water, like if you ever out in L.A. and you see the sun going down, once the sun, once you can visually see the sun touching the horizon, you have three minutes. You have exactly three minutes. You can sit there with your watch. You can time. You have three minutes and it's gone. Three minutes is gone. I read that somewhere and then I went and tried it. It's gone every day. If if it's clear enough, not cloudy, once the sun touches the horizon on water, you got three minutes. When the wind blows, you can't do nothing about it. He can bring it from the northeast. He can bring it from the west. He can bring it from the south. He can bring it hard. He can bring it cool. He can bring it hot. It's certain things that God do. God does the impossible all the time. How are those stars sitting up there? How how can you find these constellations? The Big Dipper, the Little Dipper, Orion, the Hunter. Oh, that's God. That's God. Ain't nothing you can do about it. You can't reach them stars. You can't shoot at them. You can't move them out the way. Orion, the Hunter's belt is going to beat them three stars at an angle. You, you, can, you can call it what you want to call it. Still, that's what it is. See, he does the impossible all the time. He created heaven and earth. You're saying that God can't get you through your past. Somebody did this to me. It's the worst thing. I had the worst childhood of anybody. God can't get you past that. He can move heaven, mountains, earth. He can form the Grand Canyon. He can make the water come over Niagara Falls 24-7. He can't fix your little bitty past, yours. It's amazing how people make their problems bigger than God. Somebody told me one time, stop telling God how big your problems are and start telling your problems how big God is and go on with your life. Quit driving your car looking in the rear view mirror. Ain't nothing back there but your past. And if it was hurtful or painful or something you just felt like you can't get over, take your problems to God and leave them there. You hear the old spiritual, all you've heard it. Take your burdens to the Lord, leave them there. You hear it all the time. But you think that applies to everyone but you? Come on, man. There are a lot of people out there going through much worse than you have and have overcome it all. Why won't you take the step to overcome your past so you can get on with driving your car and see where God trying to take you? But it's a trick of the enemy. The enemy tricks you from seeing your future by having you constantly looking in your past. Man, it's a trick of the devil. If the devil just let you quit, if he would just let you get to driving your car and look out into your future, your future shows hopefulness you you have hope when you see the future but he can keep you in misery if he keep you looking at your miserable past god looking for you man god would love to hear from you let's spend some time talking to god today hey god what's happening it's me i know i ain't talked to you in a while but and i feel bad about that but i need you he know that 
Everybody should say that prayer all the time. It's cool. All right. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let me have your undivided attention. It's a special day today. God has given us another gift, another Martin Luther King holiday. We here for it. We was here last year and the year before that. I'm so glad I lived to see another one, man. One of the greatest leaders of our time. We celebrate him today. One of the truly greatest leaders we've ever had. He's done more for us in terms of rights and positions and awareness than any other leader we've ever had in terms of the civil rights movement and for us as black people, in my opinion. You, there are others, and I'm not shading them at all because we need a whole collective effort. But Martin Luther King, hats off to you, my brother. Thank you so much. This is the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We grateful today. Shirley Strawberry, Carla Pharrell, Mississippi Monica Jr., and the legend that is nephew Tommy. Yeah. Got a great day lined up for you today. You know, we're going to do all of the traditional stuff because some things, you know, we don't need to forget. We just need to right. be reminded. Oh. That's right. There you go. Steve. You know, yeah. we only got one holiday that's, that's uh-huh. really, I don't, any other black people got a national holiday? Juneteenth. Yeah. Juneteenth. We're going to hear some of Dr. King's most famous speeches. Of course, the most famous one, the I Have a Dream speech. We're going to celebrate. We're going to discuss Dr. King's legacy of peace. So all morning long, we're going to talk about social injustice, uh, community service, and the importance of voting, of course, in this an election year. We've got to vote this year, y'all. Listen to me. I got we don't have purely perfect candidates. But we clearly have one that ain't got no business being president of no kind of country. And that's the Republican option that they keep trying to present to us as okay. And his name is Donald Trump. And you've got to be kidding me. Now, I got you may not be happy with the current uh, administration, but understand what they're up against now. We still got to go through the House and the Senate to pass bills. And you know the opposition is real. And that one job during the election year time is to make the other party look as bad as they possibly can. So let's stop all this ignorant foolishness about you not voting for them because this. Because if you don't vote for them, it's a vote for Donald Trump. And if you put Donald Trump in office again, he finna show you something. He showed you something last time. I don't know how you something believe. You know, man, when you start banning Muslim countries, when you start talking about closing that border, when you start talking about these abortion rights and all this here stuff right here, man, you then that, that stuff you talking about, they ain't got nothing to do with the Lord. Y'all keep masking this as a religious reason, but that ain't got nothing to do with God. You know, do you know that they talking about passing a bill where if you have an abortion, you get the death penalty? Ooh. Wow. Do you know that they're discussing that? Y'all, do you know how dangerous that is? See, first of all, how can you be pro-life and be talking about the death penalty? Make make your mind up now. You got to care about the unborn and the born if you're going to be pro-life. Make up your mind. And after they grow up. Yeah. Ooh. So, so yeah, that's what we'll be discussing all morning. Um, Dr. King's message went beyond racism. He also talked about stereotypes, poverty, privilege. Dr. King was a courageous leader of all people. So we say to you, happy King Day. And uh, coming up more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show on this King holiday right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Right now, here's the drum major instinct speech on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. An instinct, it's a kind of drum major instinct, a desire to be out front, a desire to lead the parade, a desire to be first. And it is something that runs a whole gamut of life. And so before we condemn them, let us see that we all have the drum major instinct We all want to be important, to surpass others, to achieve distinction, to lead the parade. Alfred Adler, the great uh, psychoanalyst, contends that this is the dominant impulse. Sigmund Freud used to contend that sex was the dominant impulse and Adler came with a new argument saying that this quest for recognition, this desire for attention, 
This desire for distinction is the basic impulse, the basic drive of human, human life, this drum major instinct. And you know, we begin early to ask life to put us first. Our first cry as a baby was a bid for attention. And all through childhood, the drum major impulse or instinct is a major obsession. Children ask life to grant them first place. They are a little bundle of ego. They have innately the drum major instinct. Now, in adult life, we still have it, and we really never get by it. We like to do something good, and you know, we like to be praised for it. Now, if you don't believe that, you just go on living life, and you will discover very soon that you like to be praised. Everybody likes it as a matter of fact. And somehow this warm glow we feel when we are praised or when our name is in print is something of the vitamin A to our ego. Nobody is unhappy when they are praised, even if they know they don't deserve it and even if they don't believe it. The only unhappy people about praise is when that praise is going too much towards somebody else. But everybody likes to be praised because of this real drum major instinct. Do you know that a lot of the race problem grows out of the drum major instinct? A need that some people have to feel superior a need that some people have to feel that they are first and to feel that their white skin ordained them to be first. Make it plain today because I'm against it so heavy. And they have said over and over again in ways that we see with our own eyes. In fact, not too long ago, a man down in Mississippi said that God was a charter member of the White Citizens Council. <laughs> and so, God being the charter member means that everybody who's in that has a, a kind of divinity, a kind of superiority. And think of what has happened in history as a, as a result of this perverted use of the drum major instinct. It has led to the most tragic prejudice the most tragic expressions of man's inhumanity to man. I mean, not only does this thing go into the racial struggle, it goes into the struggle between nations. And I would submit to you this morning that what is wrong in the world today is that the nations of the world are engaged in a bitter, colossal contest for supremacy. And if some doesn't happen to stop this trend, I'm sorely afraid that we won't be here to talk about Jesus Christ and about God and about brotherhood too many more years. If somebody doesn't bring an end to this suicidal thrust that we see in the world today, none of us are going to be around because somebody's going to make the mistake through our senseless blunderings of dropping a nuclear bomb somewhere, and then another one is going to drop. And don't let anybody fool you. This can happen within a matter of seconds. They have 20 megaton bombs in Russia right now that can destroy a city as big as New York in three seconds with everybody wiped away in every building. And we can do the same thing to Russia and China. But this is why we are drifting, and we are drifting there because nations are caught up with the drum major instinct. I must be first. I must be supreme. Our nation must rule the world. And I am sad to say that the nation in which we live is the supreme culprit. 
And I'm going to continue to say it to America. Because I love this country too much to see the drift that it has taken. God didn't call America to do what she's doing in the world now. God didn't call America to engage in a senseless, unjust war as a war in Vietnam. And we are criminals in that war. We've committed more war crimes almost than any nation in the world. And I'm going to continue to say it. And we won't stop it because of our pride and our arrogance as a nation. But God has a way of even putting nations in their place. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. And so God being the charter member means that everybody who's in that has a, a kind of divinity, a kind of superiority. And think of what has happened in history as a, as a result of this perverted use of the drum major instinct. has led to the most tragic prejudice, the most tragic expressions of man's inhumanity to man. I mean, not only does this thing go into the racial struggle, it goes into the struggle between nations. And I would submit to you this morning that what is wrong in the world today is that the nations of the world are engaged in a bitter, colossal contest for supremacy. And if something doesn't happen to stop this trend, I'm sorely afraid that we won't be here to talk about Jesus Christ and about God and about brotherhood too many more years. If somebody doesn't bring an end to this suicidal thrust that we see in the world today, none of us are going to be around because somebody is going to make the mistake through our senseless blunderings of dropping a nuclear bomb somewhere and then another one is going to drop and don't let anybody fool you. This can happen within a matter of seconds. They have 20 megaton bombs in Russia right now that can destroy a city as big as New York in three seconds with everybody wiped away in every building. And we can do the same thing to Russia and China. But this is where we are drifting, and we are drifting there because nations are caught up with the drum major instinct. I must be first. I must be supreme. Our nation must rule the world. And I am sad to say that the nation in which we live is the supreme culprit. And I'm going to continue to say it to America because I love this country too much to see the drift that it has taken. God didn't call America to do what she's doing in the world now. God didn't call America to engage in a senseless, unjust war as a war in Vietnam. And we are criminals in that war. We've committed more war crimes almost than any nation in the world. And I'm going to continue to say it. And we won't stop it because of our pride and our arrogance as a nation. But God has a way of even putting nations in their place. The God that I worship has a way of saying, don't play with me. He has a way of saying, as the God of the Old Testament used to say, the Hebrews, don't play with me, Israel. Don't play with me, Babylon. Be still and know that I'm God. And if you don't stop your reckless course, I'll rise up and break the backbone of your power. And that can happen to America. Every now and then I go back and read Gibbon's decline and fall of the Roman Empire. And when I come and look at America, I say to myself, the parallels are frightening. We have perverted the drum major instinct. Every now and then, I guess we all think realistically yes. about that day when we will be victimized with what is life's final common denominator. That's something that we call death. We all think about it, and every now and then I think about my own death, and I think about my own funeral. And I don't think of it in a morbid sense. 
Every now and then I ask myself, what is it that I would want said? And I leave the word to you this morning. If any of you around, when I have to meet my day, I don't want a long funeral. And if you get somebody to deliver the eulogy, tell them not to talk too long. And every now and then I wonder what I want them to say. Tell them not to mention that I have a Nobel Peace Prize. That isn't important. Tell them not to mention that I have three or four hundred other awards. That's not important. Tell them not to mention where I went to school. I'd like somebody to mention that day that Martin Luther King Jr. tried to give his life serving others. I'd like for somebody to say that day that Martin Luther King Jr. tried to love somebody. I want you to say that day that I tried to be right on the wall question. I want you to be able to say that day that I did try to feed the hungry. I want you to be able to say that day that I did try in my life to clothe those who were naked. I want you to say on that day that I did try in my life to visit those who were in prison. I want you to say that I tried to love and serve humanity. Yes, if you want to say that I was a drum major, say that I was a drum major for justice. Say that I was a drum major for peace. I was a drum major for righteousness. And all of the other shallow things will not matter. I won't have any money to leave behind. I won't have the fine and luxurious things of life to leave behind, but I just want to leave a committed life behind. And that's all I want to say. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word of song, if I can show somebody he's traveling wrong, then my living will not be in vain. If I can do my duty as a Christian or if I can bring salvation to a world once wrought, if I can spread the message as the master taught, then my living will not be in vain. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Today is MLK Day. It is a day of service. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. devoted his life to service and fighting for civil rights and freedom. Dr. King had a pursuit for racial, social, and economic justice. And Steve, I got to ask you this question. Uh, You know, you talk about this a lot. You talked about it earlier this morning. You've been through a lot growing up. So how have you learned to deal with racism? How, How have you dealt with it? I mean, look, <laughs> I mean, pretty much like most people, I mean, I'm angry about it. I don't I don't understand what's taking so long. It, it just it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, it's, it's actually pathetic. Why is it that people of color are still asking for equality, which seems like um, we're asking it from 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 somebody that's not willing to give it? I mean, it's just obviously that there are people who are set in their ways and it's frustrating. Now, we even with that said, I have devoted myself to being the best person that I can be to elevate myself as high as I can, but not only elevate myself, stick my hand back down the wall and bring up as many people as I can. Thus, my foundation, thus my ranch. Thus, me trying to promote young people, thus helping people. I'm constantly looking for ways to uplift the, the, the oppressed, the downtrodden people. And, and, and that carries over into all people, too. And, and that's what's been crazy about it, man. I'm willing to help all people. Now, do I have a special affinity and do I target mostly uh, people of color? Yeah. Yeah, I do that. And I was talking to one guy one day, and he said, well, how can you just target them? I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's where I see the most need. I see the most need in people of color, or in, in oppressed people. So I'm targeting my efforts. I said, you know, now look, it's all types of people come to the camp. 
Uh, anybody can come to the camp. Yeah. Hey, Asians are oppressed. They walk them at the camp. All Latinos come to my camp. They want to, I got white kids come to the camp. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I got Inclusive. all of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Diversity. Mm-hmm. But you know, you can't get mad at me because I know where the greater need is and I can see it more obviously. And it's my obligation because if the government not going to do it, and they trying to cut state funding and they not going to do it. Well, let's just look at this right here. For example, let's just look at the education disparity in this country. Why do we have an educational disparity? Because the money on the federal level that we pay in taxes and we pay state taxes, local taxes, it all goes into a fund. Now, the areas that pay the most funds into the state taxes or the federal taxes are the places that receive the most money back. Poor places are not going to have as big a pool to pick from. So poor places stay behind the eight ball. It's the system they set up. See, they set that system up. Not me. So what should be happening is we should, as a country, make sure that all people have access to a quality education and a free education. Nah, that ain't the American way. That ain't the American way. But that's why we're losing education-wise on the global level. Because other countries, they don't they do not do it that way. We should all be able to, we make enough money in this country where everybody should get free medical. Mm, medicine is a business. Mm-hmm. We, yeah. we don't get that. Yeah. Being so, you know, is a but, business, yeah. Right, but mm-hmm. this is the system they set up. And the system is not set up and targeted for the underprivileged or the oppressed. Mm-hmm. Or the less fortunate. That's right, right, Steve. So it's not set up that way. So my obligation and my foundation is for the less fortunate, the oppressed, the downtrodden. And I go out of my way to see that that happens. But, you know, we're going to win. It's just sad that it's taken so damn long. And as it, it pisses you off. And I, I would say this to anybody who is not of color. How long would you like to wait to be treated equal? How much time you want to devote to same treatment, equal pay, fairness in housing? How would you like it if every time you cut on the news, the police were shooting somebody who looked like you? Hmm. How, how long? How, how long you want us to wait? I mean, I'm, I'm listening. It can't be much. And I don't, I don't know the white lady's name that asked that famous question to a room full of white people. Who in here would be willing to trade places with black people? Who? Was that Jane Elliott? Was Jane, that Jane? Yeah, Jane. Um, mm-hmm. I think so. Jane Elliott. And yeah. she says, because you know that they are being treated unfairly. But that nobody's doing anything about it so we have to do it ourselves we have to do this ourselves we have to keep picking ourselves up that old pull yourself up by the bootstraps yeah that's cool except a lot of people don't have the boots or the straps so you got to keep the faith and we got to reach back and we got to help as many as we can and it's so interesting that you asked the question, Steve, how long? Because as we celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King, that was in the 60s. That was I'm in the t- 60s. I, I, I ain't yeah, patient no going more. This. I'm yeah. out of patience. I'm done with you talking about waiting. I ain't waiting no more. Hmm. See, people are hit the wall now. People, whether you we're ain't going to give it, we're going to take it. I'm ex- I've been exhausted. Yeah. I'm overwhelmed. I'm sick and tired of it. And And, and we are. People of color are sick and tired of it. And you would be too if it was happening to you, but it ain't happening to you. So you ain't got nothing to be sick and tired of. That's right. And we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show as we celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, we got to say happy King Day. Today is MLK Day. And uh, it's a day on, not just a day off. Uh, We want to remind everyone to try and participate in some sort of community service in your community. You can volunteer for an organization. You can donate to a cause or a charity of your choice. 
All of us here on the Steve Harvey Morning Show have causes that are important to us. Mentoring young men from fatherless homes, helping wounded veterans, breast cancer awareness, sickle cell awareness, domestic violence awareness. Community service teaches you about empathy. It strengthens the community and it creates change. So here's a question. Why is it so important, Steve, to give back? Well, I mean, you know, it's a simple philosophy that I've learned. My mother taught it to me. Mm -hmm. God blesses you to become a blessing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in our community, man, we should be more in the uplift business anyway, because Mm -hmm. we need it, man. Mm -hmm. We need it because the powers that be have policies in place to suppress us. So when we get in a position, we can ill afford to ignore the others who are less fortunate. We have got to extend our hand. He ain't heavy. He's my brother. Mm -hmm. And that's what we should be about, the uplift of our community, not the destruction of it. We have got to stop bending and lending our ear to those who are determined and hell bent to destroy the black culture, especially when we do it to ourselves. Are, Are we crazy? Man, we cheer for each other to get where we go, and then when they get there, the jealousy of them being there becomes too much. We should be in the uplift business of one another. That's what Carla's foundation is about with breast cancer awareness. That's what domestic violence is where with Shirley. That's what the Wounded Warriors is about with uh, Tommy. That's why Kia fights so hard to bring awareness to what's happening to so many African Americans with this disease that they don't put enough money behind. They don't put enough research behind because it's us. Mm -hmm. See, Mm -hmm. so we've all committed ourselves to a level of uplift and that's what it's about. Not the destruction of the culture. We have got to do that. Martin Luther King's whole life was about service. That's Mm -hmm. it, huh? That's That's what you remember about him. Now, some people want to come out and talk about the negative that he did. He's a human being. He's a human being. You do that all day long. But once again, y'all, if you pay attention to it, they took 30 second sound bites to get rid of Jesus. You can take a 30 second sound bite and get rid of anybody. Wow. But stay in the uplift business Mm -hmm. because that's what we are here for. Service to our brothers and sisters. That's what it's about. Amen. That's right, Steve. Keep it positive. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show on this Martin Luther King holiday right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. The late great civil rights icon, State Representative John Lewis, spoke at the March on Washington back in 1963. And then he spoke at the 50th anniversary March on Washington back in 2015. Take a listen. 50 years ago, 50 years ago, I stood right here in this spot, 23 years old, had all of my hair and a few pounds lighter. So I come back here again to say that those days, for the most part, are gone. But we have another fight. We must stand up and fight the good fight as we march today. For there are forces, there are people who want to take us back we cannot go back. We come too far. We want to go forward. Back in 1963, hundreds and thousands and millions of our brothers and sisters could not register to vote. When I stood here 50 years ago, I said, one man, one vote is the African cry. It is ours too. It must be ours. I also said, Some people tell us to wait, tell us to be patient. I said 50 years later, we cannot wait, we cannot be patient. We want jobs and we want our freedom now. All of us, it doesn't matter whether we're black or white, Latino, Asian American or Native American. It doesn't matter whether we're straight or gay. We're one people, we're one family, we're one house. We all live in the same house. So I said to you, my brothers and sisters, 
We cannot give up. We cannot give out. We cannot give in. We must get out there and push and pull. Now I, a few short years ago, almost 48 years ago, well, 48 years ago, almost 50 years ago, I gave a little blood on that bridge in Selma, Alabama for the right to vote. I am not going to stand by and let the Supreme Court take the right to vote away from us. You cannot stand by. You cannot sit down. You got to stand up, speak up, speak out, and get in the way. Make some noise. The vote is precious. It is almost sacred. It is the most powerful nonviolent tool we have in a democratic society, and we got to use it. Back in 1963, we hadn't heard of the internet. We didn't have a cellular telephone, my iPad, our part. But we used what we had to bring about a nonviolent revolution. And I said to all of the young people, you must get out there and push and pull and make America what America should be for all of us. We must say to the Congress, fix the voting rights site. We must say to the Congress, pass comprehensive immigration reform. It doesn't make sense that millions of our people are living in the shadow. Bring them out into the light and set them on a path to citizenship. So hang in there. Keep the faith. I got arrested 40 times during the 60s. Beaten, left bloody and unconscious. But I'm not tired. I'm not weary. I'm not prepared to sit down and give up and ready to fight and continue to fight. And you must fight. Thank you very much. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. Happy King Holiday, everyone. Um, of course, last week, boy, last week during a stop, uh, this was a campaign stop in Iowa, former President Donald Trump said the Civil War was, quote, so horrible but so fascinating. Going on to suggest that the conflict, which was fought over, of course, the issue of slavery, we all know that, could have been negotiated. Uh, A comment that drew immediate backlash from civil rights groups and historians alike. He said so many mistakes were made. See, there was something I think could have been negotiated, to be honest with you, All the people died. So many people died, Trump went on to say. Abraham Lincoln, of course, if he negotiated it, you probably wouldn't even know who Abraham Lincoln was. What? 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 My granddad ain't up for no negotiation. (laughs) So this is who y'all want to be the president? Yep, that's exactly who they want. Yeah. This ignorant fool. (laughs) This ignorant ass man. (laughs) <laughs> he ain't got no problem. He can't. He has to say ignorant stuff because he ignorant. <sighs> now, is he a brilliant businessman? Absolutely. No problem. <laughs> but, man, I'm trying to tell you now, that ain't that ain't what you want. No. But whatever, um, man. I'm, I'm going to be fine whoever they put in there. I'm, he, he not in charge of me. There's no way I'll give him permission to be in charge of me. There's no way. Now, it's uh, no a court. According to USA Today, Savante Myrick, who is the president of People for the American Way, that is a progressive advocacy group, said that Trump's comments demonstrate, quote, a glaring ignorance of American history. Myrick went on to say, and it seems like President Trump was implying that some sort of failure of diplomacy on behalf of Abraham Lincoln is what caused the Civil War. He accused Trump's comments of being extremely appealing to Confederate sympathizers and white supremacist folks. What caused the Civil War was your forefathers' insistence on maintaining the slavery system. Yes. That's what caused the Civil War. Mm -hmm. What caused the Civil War is their refusal to acknowledge and accept 
black people as human beings. Mm-hmm. That's what caused the Civil it. War. Mm-hmm. Them your forefathers. See, mm-hmm. I, I'm not, I'm not going to ever stop saying that. Them your forefathers. Them not my forefathers. Them your forefathers. Yeah. Y'all yeah, stole no more America. Free labor. Mm-hmm. Y'all, y'all stole America. Mm-hmm. Louisiana Treaty, all that. That's y'all. Y'all did that. Y'all came over here. The Indians saved, the Native Americans saved y'all life. And then to thank them, y'all took everything from them. Got them on reservation. That's that's what y'all did. That's your MO. In you had the Asian people come over here and build the railroads. And you had black people build everything else. Mm-hmm. <laughs> did you right just fuck your teeth? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 to, what you want us to do? <laughs> And then after we build your country and make your country, then you don't want us in the country. Now all your policies is keep us down and suppressed. Well, everybody ain't with day. that no more. Mm-hmm. Right. We still have to fight for voting rights. All right. And you know addition, why you have to fight for your voting rights? Because the actions of the forefathers still reside, reside in their great grandchildren. That's yeah. why. Ooh. Well, all word right there, yeah. sir. Yeah. And uh, Latasha Brown, uh, who is a co-founder of Black Voters Matter, uh, agreed, saying that Trump's comments appeared aimed at downplaying the enslavement of black people in America's history. Uh, She says, we know the history of the South. We know that part of the elements of the South were centered around the institution of slavery and in maintaining that people of color would be in a permanent social status. Uh, Brown accused Trump of speaking to those that still feel like their only advantage is white supremacy. Mm. Wow. Clearly. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Please register to vote and vote this year. Any argument? No. No, (laughs) No. I'm good with what she just said. Good with Mm -hmm. it. Yeah. 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 This is But you know, they prove it. All you you gotta do is look at Florida. Mm -hmm. They Mm -hmm. want to erase slavery from history books. Mm -hmm. Because it makes them feel uncomfortable. You can come to Texas. Hello. (laughs) You can come to Texas. You know how uncomfortable we've been? Man, yeah, is that the concern? Years. Your History? ass are uncomfortable. Right. <laughs> Y'all on day 30. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man. Well, wow. Steve, you talked about it earlier. You know, the crew, we've been talking about it. This is an election year, 2024, and we have to take this seriously. Mm-hmm. We have to take this seriously. Trump tried to overthrow the government on January 6th. That just happened not too long ago. The anniversary yeah. about this police officers died. Mm-hmm. They tried to kidnap senators and Congress people. They're taking away women's re- reproductive rights. Mm-hmm. They're taking away affirmative action at universities and colleges. Y'all better wake up. Y'all better and y'all and black vote. people out here that's thinking Trump is good for black people. You a fool. Yeah, he already pr- he already was in office for four years. What did he do? Wait, my dog, for he black Trump ain't good for nobody, man. Y'all, y'all He's sadly nobody. mistaken. And 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 the other voters that's trying to convince them that that yeah, we're not having that, man. You that he's good for you mm-hmm. because he's just like you. But he's nothing like me. I'm nothing like him. We have no similarities. Hmm. None. I get puzzled by, and maybe I shouldn't say this, but Hispanics that get Trump's vote. I just don't understand that part. I don't get that either. Well, it's, mm, it, I, I I Hispanics, do. blacks, I, yeah, you know, I mean, minorities. Yeah. yeah I, I think they're talking. Republicans at heart, and he's the Republican candidate. But he's trying you know to get I'm them saying? out of the country. I don't get that. <laughs> well, part. right. There are those Latinos who are here who have now integrated into the system. Yeah. Who are against open borders? Mm-hmm. Yeah, very true. You ever seen somebody get there and then act like they've been there the whole time? Uh-huh. Clarence Thomas. Uh huh. Firing them off. Go on, June. <laughs> right, Man, affirmative on. action. Uh-huh. I'm saying uh-huh. he took advantage of yeah. it now on the Supreme Court. Yeah, <laughs> you don't right. want affirmative action. Get away action. with it, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you benefited yeah. from it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's it. Well, we have to vote. I mean, you know, like you said earlier, Steve, we may not or people may not want Biden in office. They may talk about Biden saying he's too old and whatever, whatever. But 
I mean, what are the choices do we have here? That's I'd rather have somebody we're... old in office than somebody that's corrupt in office. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let me tell and you something. Who's only for himself? If this man is this corrupt that you know about, do mm-hmm. you know the stuff that you don't know about? You bring up Ooh. a good point, sir. Mm-hmm. He, this man is in deep water. Yeah. This is the stuff you found out about. This is so much more to him. And if you all let him get this election in, which will keep him out of jail for sure, oh, he going to clown. He going to clown. He going to clown. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, he going to clown. Y'all get ready for the show. That's the last one, too. That would be the last one. He going to clown. <laughs> well, you know, he might do well. away yeah. with our whole democratic system. I mean, yeah, the there's so exactly. much at stake. There's so yeah, much at yeah. stake in this new, in this upcoming election. Our democracy. Yeah. Yes, you are right, mm-hmm. Shirley. Absolutely right. Our democracy is at stake. <laughs> it's what at were you stake. saying, Jimmy? Our freedom. Oh, no, he yeah, same one said, remember he said, I will be a dictator on day one. Yes. Yep. Yes. <laughs> yes. He's you always he had a dictator mentality. Well, you think listen, he the last time he, he got in on day one, he tried to rescind Obamacare immediately. It didn't work. Obamacare, uh, which is really outstanding and the people know it. That's why they can never get rid of it. And he signed a bill to ban travel from seven Muslim countries. Hmm. Hey, this dude right here, man. All right. This is MLK Day. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at the top of the hour right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said that life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? Coming up, we got some excerpts from Dr. King's I've Been to the Mountaintop speech. Let us rise up tonight with a greater readiness. In these powerful days, these days of challenge to make America what it ought to be, We have an opportunity to make America a better nation. And I want to thank God once more for allowing me to be here with you. You know, several years ago, I was in New York City autographing the first book that I had written. And while sitting there autographing books, a demented black woman came up. The only question I heard from her was, you, Martin Luther King, and I was looking down writing, and I said, yes. The next minute, I felt something beating on my chest. Before I knew it, I had been stabbed by this demented woman. I was rushed to Harlem Hospital. It was a dark Saturday afternoon. That blade had gone through, and the x-rays revealed that the tip of the blade was on the edge of my aorta, the main artery. And once that's punctured, you're drowned in your own blood. That's the end of you. It came out in the New York Times the next morning that if I had merely sneezed, I would have died. Well, about four days later, they allowed me, after the operation, after my chest had been opened and the blade had been taken out, to move around in the wheelchair in the hospital. They allowed me to read some of the mail that came in, and from all over, the states and the world, kind letters came in. I read a few, but one of them I will never forget. I had received one from the president and the vice president. I've forgotten what those telegrams said. I'd received a visit and a letter from the governor of New York, but I've forgotten what that letter said. But there was another letter that came from a little girl, a young girl who was a student at the White Plains High School. And I looked at that letter, and I'll never forget it. It said simply, Dear Dr. King, I am a ninth grade student at the White Plains High School. She said, while it should not matter, I would like to mention that I'm a white girl. I read in the paper of your misfortune and of your suffering. And I read that if you had sneezed, you would have died. And I'm simply writing you to say that I'm so happy that you didn't sneeze. And I want to say tonight, I want to say tonight that I too am happy that I didn't sneeze because if I had sneezed, I wouldn't have been around here in 1960. 
when students all over the South started sitting in at lunch counters. And I knew that as they were sitting in, they were really standing up for the best in the American dream and taking the whole nation back to those great wells of democracy which were dug deep by the founding fathers in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. If I had sneezed, I wouldn't have been around here in 1961 when we decided to take a ride for freedom and ended segregation in interstate travel. If I had sneezed, I wouldn't have been around here in 1962 when Negroes in all Bennett, Georgia, decided to straighten their backs up. And whenever men and women straighten their backs up, they are going somewhere because a man can't ride your back unless it is bent. If I had sneezed, if I had sneezed, I wouldn't have been here in 1963. And the black people of Birmingham, Alabama, aroused the conscience of this nation and brought into being the Civil Rights Bill if I had sneezed. I wouldn't have had a chance later that year in August to try to tell America about a dream that I had had if I had sneezed. I wouldn't have been down in Selma, Alabama to see the great movement there if I had sneezed. I wouldn't have been in Memphis to see a community rally around those brothers and sisters who are suffering. I'm so happy that I didn't sneeze. And they were telling me, now it doesn't matter now. It really doesn't matter what happens now. I left Atlanta this morning and as we got started on the plane, that was six of us. The pilot said over the public address system, we are sorry for the delay. But we have Dr. Martin Luther King on the plane and to be sure that all of the bags were checked and to be sure that nothing would be wrong on the plane. We had to check out everything carefully and we've had the plane protected and guarded all night. And then I got into Memphis and some began to say the threats, or talk about the threats that were out. Or what would happen to me from some of our sick white brothers? Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead, but it really doesn't matter with me now because I've been to the mountaintop. And I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life, longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know the night that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up, we're going to play some excerpts from Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech. happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. But 100 years later, The Negro still is not free. 
100 years later, the life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. 100 years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. 100 years later, the Negro is still languished in the corners of American society and finds himself in exile in his own land. And so we've come here today to dramatize a shameful condition. In a sense, we've come to our nation's capital to cash a check. When the architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, they were signing a promissory note to which every American was to fall heir. This note was a promise that all men, yes, black men as well as white men, would be guaranteed the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is obvious today that America has defaulted on this promissory note insofar as her citizens of color are concerned. Instead of honoring this sacred obligation, America has given the Negro people a bad check, a check which has come back marked insufficient funds. But we refuse to believe that the Bank of Justice is bankrupt. <laughs> to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great vaults of opportunity of this nation. And so we've come to cash this check, yes! a check that will give us upon demand the riches of freedom yes. and the security of justice. Yes. We have also come to this hallowed spot to remind America of the fierce urgency of now. This is no time to engage in the luxury of cooling off or to take the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. Now is the time to make real the promises of democracy. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice. Now is the time. <laughs> the from the quicksands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. Now is the time. <laughs> Make justice a reality for all of God's children. It would be fatal for the nation to overlook the urgency of the moment. This sweltering summit of the Negro's legitimate discontent will not pass until that is an invigorating autumn of freedom and equality. 1963 is not an end, but a beginning. Those who hope that the Negro needed to blow off steam and will now be content, will have a rude awakening if the nation returns to business as usual. <laughs> there will be neither rest nor tranquility in America until the Negro is granted his citizenship rights. The whirlwinds of revolt will continue to shake the foundations of our nation until the bright day of justice emerges. But that is something that I must say to my people who stand on the warm threshold which leads into the palace of justice. In the process of gaining our rightful place, we must not be guilty of wrongful deeds. Let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom 
by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Right now, as promised, uh, we're going to play some of Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech, which he delivered on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial back in 1963. One day right there in Alabama, will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted. And every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain. And the crooked places will be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. This is our hope. This is a faith that I go back to the South with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. This will be the day day when all of God's children will be able to sing with new meaning my country tears of thee. Sweet land of liberty of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. And so let freedom ring. From the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire, let freedom ring. From the mighty mountains of New York, let freedom ring from the heightening Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring, and when this happens, when we allow freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. We'll be back. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Today is MLK Day. It is a day of service. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. devoted his life to service and fighting for civil rights and freedom. Dr. King had a pursuit for racial, social, and economic justice. And Steve, I got to ask you this question. Uh, you know, you talk about this a lot. You talked about it earlier this morning. You've been through a lot growing up. So how have you learned to deal with racism? How, how have you dealt with it? I mean, look, (laughs) I mean, pretty much like most people, I mean, I'm angry about it. I don't understand what's taking so long. It doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, It's it's actually pathetic. Why is it that people of color are still asking for equality, which seems like um, we're asking it from 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 somebody that's not willing to give it. I mean, it's just obviously that there are people who are set in their ways. And it's frustrating. Now, we even with that said, I have devoted myself to being the best person that I can be to elevate myself as high as I can, but not only elevate myself, stick my hand back down the wall and bring up as many people as I can. Thus, my foundation. Thus, my ranch. Thus, me trying to promote young people. Thus, helping people. I'm constantly looking for ways 
to uplift the, the the oppressed, the downtrodden people, and 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 that carries over into all people too, and and that's what's been crazy about it, man. I'm willing to help all people. Now, do I have a special affinity, and do I target mostly uh, people of color? Yeah, yeah, I do that. And I was talking to one guy one day, and he said, "Well, how can you just target them?" I said, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! That's where I see the most need." I see the most need in people of color, or in, in oppressed people. So I'm targeting my efforts. I said, you know, now look, it's all types of people come to the camp. Uh, anybody can come to the camp. Yeah. Asians are oppressed. They walk them at the camp. All Latinos come to my camp. They want yeah, I got white kids come to the camp. You know, I got Inclusive. all of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Diversity. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you, you can't get mad at me. Because I know where the greater need is, and I can see it more obviously. And it's my obligation, because if the government not going to do it, well, let's just look at this right here. For example, let's just look at the education disparity in this country. Why do we have an educational disparity? Because the money on the federal level that we pay in taxes, and we pay state taxes, local taxes, it all goes into a fund. Now, the areas that pay the most funds into the state taxes or the federal taxes are the places that receive the most money back. Poor places are not going to have as big a pool to pick from. So poor places stay behind the eight ball. It's the system they set up. See, they set that system up. Not me. So what should be happening is we should, as a country, make sure that all people have access to a quality education and a free education. Nah, that ain't the American way. That ain't the American way. But that's why we're losing education-wise on the global level. Because other countries, they don't, they don't do it that way. We should all be able to, we make enough money in this country where everybody should get free medical. No, mm, medicine is a business. Mm -hmm. We yeah. we don't get that. Yeah, being so, sick you know, is a but, business. Yeah, right. But mm -hmm. this is the system they set up, and the system is not set up and targeted for the underprivileged or the oppressed, mm -hmm. or the less fortunate. That's right, right, Steve. So it's not set up that way. So my obligation and my foundation is for the less fortunate, the oppressed, the downtrodden, and I go out of my way to see that that happens. But you know, and we gonna you. win. It's just sad that it's taken so damn long. And it's, it, it pisses you off. And I, I would say this to anybody who is not of color. How long would you like to wait to be treated equal? That's that right. Part. And we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show as we celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Happy King holiday. We do want to remind everyone to get registered to vote, please. It is so crucial this year. Today, and today is the Iowa caucus. The caucus is a process by which voters in Iowa select their top choice for their party's presidential nomination. It differs from a primary because it's overseen by the state party, not the state government, and does not require voting at a polling place. Now, according to Reuters.com, the Republican Party will hold its caucuses on January 15th. That is today. Uh, Iowa Democrats separately are choosing their candidate entirely by mail-in ballot this election cycle and will release their results on March 5th. That's Super Tuesday. The caucuses are viewed as the first snapshot of voter support for presidential candidates. Typically, those candidates will have spent months campaigning across the state testing their messages and their appeal. Those who don't fare well sometimes opt to drop out of the race. Former President Donald Trump is heavily favored to win. Well, <laughs> right there. <laughs> Man, y'all don't vote In spite register. of Woo! everything. <laughs> Do they not see? No, 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 guys, guys, they see it and they cool with it because that's them. That's them. That's why they don't see no wrong with it. Because that's how they are. Period. Wake up, y'all. That's how they are.
Go to whenweallvote.org and get registered today. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, we got to say happy King Day. Today is MLK Day. And uh, it's a day on, not just a day off. Uh, We want to remind everyone to try and participate in some sort of community service in your community. You can volunteer for an organization. You can donate to a cause or a charity of your choice. All of us here on the Steve Harvey Morning Show have causes that are important to us. Mentoring young men from fatherless homes, helping wounded veterans, breast cancer awareness, sickle cell awareness, domestic violence awareness. Community service teaches you about empathy. It strengthens the community and it creates change. So here's a question. Why is it so important, Steve, to give back? Well, I mean, you know, it's a simple philosophy that I've learned. My mother taught it to me. Mm -hmm. God blesses you to become a blessing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in our community, man, we should be more in the uplift business anyway, because Mm -hmm. we need it, man. Mm -hmm. We need it because the powers that be have policies in place to suppress us. So when we get in a position, we can ill afford to ignore the others who are less fortunate. We have got to extend our hand. He ain't heavy. He's my brother. Mm -hmm. And that's what we should be about. The uplift of our community, not the destruction of it. We have got to stop bending and lending our ear to those who are determined and hell bent to destroy the black culture, especially when we do it to ourselves. Are, Are we crazy? Man, we cheer for each other to get where we go, and then when they get there, the jealousy of them being there becomes too much. We should be in the uplift business of one another. That's what Carla's foundation is about with breast cancer awareness. That's what domestic violence is where with Shirley. That's what the Wounded Warriors is about with uh, Tommy. That's why Kia fights so hard to bring awareness to what's happening to so many African Americans with this disease that they don't put enough money behind. They don't put enough research behind because it's us. Mm -hmm. See, Mm -hmm. so we've all committed ourselves to a level of uplift and that's what it's about. Not the destruction of the culture. We have got to do that. Martin Luther King's whole life was about service. That's Mm -hmm. it, huh? That's That's what you remember about him. Now, some people want to come out and talk about the negative that he did. He's a human being. He's a human being. You can do that all day long. But once again, y'all, if you pay attention to it, they took 30 second sound bites to get rid of Jesus. You can take a 30 second sound bite and get rid of anybody. Wow. But stay in the uplift business Mm -hmm. because that's what we are here for. Service to our brothers and sisters. That's what it's about. Amen. That's right, Steve. Keep it positive. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show on this Martin Luther King holiday right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Steve, we get this request every year. Uh, People want us to play the closing from your stand-up special. Remember when you did this? This is so memorable. Don't trip. He ain't through with me yet at uh, Bishop T.D. Jake's Megafest. This was back in 2006. People still love this. I know the exact year that I stopped going to hell. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah, Yeah, 2005, 2006, about right. 2007 when I really put the brakes on it. But Mm. yeah, I was full blast all the way up to 2005. Full blast. Rocket rocket boosters. (laughs) Just going. (laughs) Committed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man. Then Bishop called you and asked you to. (laughs) And, you know, and he called me and asked me, and I told him, I said, man, let me think about it. And then I told him, finally, about the third car, I said, Bishop, I said, can't do it, man. I said, bro, you asking me that? That's a whole hour. No, because I remember church people ain't going to be able to deal with me. He said, hey, man, Mm -hmm. I know you. He said, but better Mm -hmm. than that, God know your heart. He said, you good brother, man. You could do it. Come on, do this. All right, man, I'll do it. All right, good, I'm put you down. I'm put you on the way. All right, good. <laughs> Since so you he committed. Was done, he was done with it. He didn't know what he had threw me into. Because let me tell you something, man. I had to go right. Don't mm-hmm. trip, he ain't through with me yet. It's a whole special I wrote. Mm-hmm. I had to go oh, write wow. that special. 
what mm-hmm. jokes I was doing on the road. No. Oh, no, you I can't had to be. go okay. write that special. Yeah, I had to go write be. that one. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I had to go put this church stuff together. It was probably the easiest, hardest set I've ever written because I grew up in the church, so I knew a lot of church stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. did not think that the church folks was going to accept it because I was going to have to talk about them. I was going to have to talk about the people that they let read announcements. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because well, the uh, first I thing about reading that. announcements, reading is fundamental. You can't yeah. put, the ignorant people shouldn't be reading announcements. <laughs> <laughs> At the church, sick and shut No, I just, and it's just a lot of stuff I knew calling the past about every little thing. I just, I said, and then stuff that I knew how the choir sang. Who right. in the choir? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. stuff mm-hmm. you can't do no more. Right, right, <laughs> right. I do any of them jokes. I'm being in trouble today. That's so true, Steve, because my grandmother, when she saw that special, she said, how he know all this is so mm-hmm. true? Mm-hmm. Talking about the church, all mm-hmm. of that. All church, of I, I knew church because I grew up in it. Yeah. Uh-huh. What you was going to ask me? I was like, uh, like you know, like for us comedians, you know, you don't know where the bit gonna come from. But do you remember the comedy moment? segment? Mm-hmm. Yeah, do you remember the moment when you came up with that intro for Christ? Do you know you was at the time and place oh, yeah. you was at? Oh. I was at I was at the Grand Lux Restaurant yeah, in L.A. I was there Hills, too. I remember at the it. Beverly Center. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Cause I used to go from the radio show to the Grand Lux and sit there all day. Sometimes I eat two, three meals there. Yes. I, we play dominoes. Why black people sit corner. there all day though? Why do we yeah. do that? all that's day? Why, that's why you they know, shut had, it down too. <laughs> you know, I had a lot going on back then. So yeah, we knew everything on center. that menu. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know, I, like, I, and I would just sit there. And so one day, man, uh. Boom was there, and Boom, dog, you done had a hell of a career, man. What you like the most? I said, man, I introduced everybody. I didn't introduce Bobby Streisand. I introduced, you know, uh, uh, Neil Diamond. I done right. introduced, I, I'm talking about every black person. I done, Beyonce, Jay-Z, I don't care who it is. I've Luther, Whitney, Michael. I said, only person I ain't never introduced was Jesus. I said, if I could just introduce Jesus, that'll cap it for me. They said, man, what would you say? And that was the bit. If I had the pleasure of bringing out Christ, this is just how I would do it. It ain't got to be the way you do it. You might not think it's just right, but this is how I would do it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce a man who needs no introduction. His credits are too long to list. He has done the impossible time after time. He hailed out of a manger in Bethlehem, Jerusalem, by way of heaven. in the Catholic Church today. His daddy is the author of a book that has been on the bestseller list since the beginning of time. He holds the record for the world's greatest fish fry. He fed 5,000 hungry souls with two Special effects, no camera tricks. He has a headshot on every church fan across the country. Even before the kings of comedy, he was hailed the king of all kings, ruler of the universe, alpha and omega, beginning and the end. Get up on your feet. Put your hands together and show your love for the second coming of the one and only. 
Steve Harvey contest. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 